Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young here on a Thursday, rocking and rolling. But before we dive into what we're going to talk about, which a little bit of a shift. I think everybody's probably in a defensive state of mind after the first couple of days of the week because we were loaded with, with words from players and coaches and everything else there. But we're going to shift back to the offense and probably to a place that isn't getting enough love. I, I think people understand just how good it's going to be. But I think the running back situation gets overlooked because so many people are excited about Avery Johnson, and then in turn, okay, what are the pass catchers going to look like for him? I mean, Keegan Johnson's got a bunch of buzz. So I think the running backs, despite the fact that K-State is going to have a really good group of them, has been a little bit overlooked. So we'll dive into that. I've got a couple of questions to throw DY's way today. But before we dive into all of that, you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two ireland.com so getting closer and closer to that one year out day from k-state and iowa state starting week zero of the 2025 college football season now with the running backs for k-state dj giddens returns after a 1200 yard season he is in good standing uh, it's been well documented now that if he replicates what he did last year he will easily move inside the top five of all time rushing at k-state and I believe that if he does it exactly, duplicating what he did last year, he would be fourth all-time behind Darren Sproles, Deuce Vaughn, and John Hubert. So really good company for DJ Giddens. He's been a really good player. And in addition to that, K-State has now added Dylan Edwards, who they really wanted out of high school. Obviously, everybody knows what talent he possesses. But there are some other guys that are going to maybe get some looks this year um, because we know that Chris Kleiman in his past traditionally – has liked to use quite a few running backs. Just Deuce Vaughn was a total different animal for him, and he didn't have to uh, really mix it up too much, or you really didn't need to. I mean, Jacardier Wright uh, got mentioned yesterday in some tweets, uh, and it was funny thinking about 2021, Deuce Vaughn is the running back, and we're like, give Jacardier Wright the ball more. Uh, with the I running didn't. back. I yeah, didn't. I know. I know you didn't. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> trying to put that on you. Um, there was plenty of it. I, you know, you were rallying off some numbers there, and you might not have this offhand, but I wanted to toss the question into the universe. I think there's a good chance this is DJ Gins last year at Kansas State, but if you were to come back and, as you said, duplicate last year's performance, so basically two more seasons of that, does he get close to the record at all? Uh, I think it would probably depend on what your definition of close is. I don't remember off the top of my head. I can pull it up real quick. I was going to grab my uh media guide when you were talking about it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, he would. So let's see. He based off of where he sits right now. How how far is he behind right now? I guess yeah. Uh, so right now. I got to go pull up because this is last year's media guide. So I need to get his actual numbers in front of me. I got, I, I got this year's media guide. We got it the other day. Yeah. Okay. So he sits right now in his career. He is at uh, one th uh, <laughs> a little over 1,500 yards. So, and the record is the record well, is, yeah, uh, is let's see, 4,979. So I don't think <laughs> no. He, he basically would. needs another thirty five hundred yards. So he'd have to. Yeah, he'd have to up it. That that's the thing that I knew that the Sproles number was just so insane because that was the other thing too. Like he can get Deuce though, probably. Yeah, he could get Deuce. Deuce is at thirty six hundred. So uh, that would certainly be in the realm of possibility. But yes, that there's a lot going on there. Uh, actually, DJ's a little is more than fifteen hundred yards. Yeah, uh, and to be honest, he career. doesn't even have to duplicate. He can be a little bit less than last year each of the next two seasons and probably get that. And you also got to think, chance to play more games. If he gets to a Big 12 title, 
it wouldn't just be the standard 13 games. You're then talking about, you know, a potential playoff berth. You get a one game in the playoff, two games in the playoff. Uh, but obviously, I think an element that that will hinder DJ, I think he, he'll be a better back, but his production could still be sawed off a little bit because of Dylan Edwards. All right, well, then let's get into it because – my first question for you in regards to the running backs in, in your world of how you're predicting this, between the carries that DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards will comp- combine for this year, what is the percentage split in there? So, you know, is it it, w- it won't be a 50-50 to one guy uh, and the other. It'll be some discrepancy there. So for those two guys, the carries that they share, you add them up at the end of the year, what percentage goes to DJ Giddens and what percentage goes to Dylan Edwards? Yeah, that's a tough question right off the bat. I, my gut instinct, and and obviously this is without me really looking into s- stuff in front of me, like past history and all that, but my, when you first said it, I thought, I mean, I could still see DJ getting about like 70% and Dylan 30, and that might sound wild, but but I'm just taking into account the different ways that Dylan Edwards will be used. I don't think he's solely going to be a running back. Okay. That did not answer. So you're, I mean, I, I think 70, 30. The yeah. I, th- I think that's, I think that's probably fair. I'll, I'll do the math for you real quick on what Giddens and Ward was last year. And DJ Giddens was just over 64% of the carry split uh-huh. between him and Trayshawn Ward. So 70 is probably too much. It's probably 60, 40. Well, but here, here's the thing that I would, I would leave out there for you is that Trayshawn Ward was not used to catch the ball as much as maybe it would have initially been thought. So I do think like when it comes down to it, maybe a lot more of the ways that Dylan Edwards gets the ball is via the pass. And also the way that it's going to get counted. Like, we have seen or do a they lot really in practice. Really yeah, we've seen a lot more in practice. The two looks that we've gotten, Dylan Edwards has been a part of that group that's been getting the Jets, and so those would be counted as passes and everything. So I, I think you're actually probably pretty close to what it, it will end up being. I, It's probably good for people to get a, a, a realistic idea of what it's actually going to look like uh, because it's not going to be, you know, okay, DJ – gets a carry here. Now Dylan gets a carry here. They're going to find different creative ways to get those guys the ball. And another element of this will be, we don't know exactly what the run pass ratio will be under an offensive coordinator, Connor Riley. Yeah. All right. Uh, Next question for you then. This is kind of in the same vein, but this is kind of uh, for both of these guys together. How many receptions do the running backs have this season? A little bit of context for you going into it. DJ Giddens and Trayshawn Ward combined for 46 catches last season. So where do you think it goes this year uh, for the for the running back duo, the top two guys on that list? You know, D- DJ is probably going to see his receiving numbers drop a little bit because of Edwards. You know, I could see – I, I think it's definitely going to increase – but by how much I don't know, because what I think here is, like you said, DJ and Trayshawn split that a little bit, but I think the number could be still ballpark that total with Dylan Edwards just getting a larger share, but I'll say 55 to 60. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that seems probably about right. I We're probably looking, I mean, over the course of the season, like it's not crazy to think that they try to get Dylan Edwards the ball two or three times a game you know, through the air. And then you're, you'll have obviously those moments still where it's like last year against UCF or NC state. Like they had those moments where they were going to be able to get DJ a big play in the passing game. Uh, and he, I mean, he was good there last year, 29 catches for over 320 yards. So uh, I figured I'd, I'd throw gets, that one out there. Yeah. If he, if he got 29 last year, you would think Dylan's probably getting 40, 45 at the very least. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one's still in kind of the same vein of, of previewing these two, the two main backs on this roster right now. Which 100-yard interval do both players wind up getting to this year in terms of their rushing numbers? So, for example, like last year, DJ Giddens got to that 1,200 threshold, uh, and then I, I don't even remember what Trayshawn Wards ended up being. But 
where do they where do those guys hit this year in your estimation? I know this is another really tough question, but I'm just trying to Yeah, you know, no, it's I, good, I think this is good, good for painting the picture of expectations for for people out there and kind of understanding not just what these guys might do for K-State this year, but it kind of gives an idea of what the offense is going to look like now. I think Avery Johnson's going to take away a little bit here too. Yep. I will say DJ gets just over a thousand. Okay. I think again, and the quantity of games being different, potentially being different this year is another added layer of uncertainty, right? Because what if this team makes it to Arlington? What if this team yeah. plays two playoff games? Like, yep. or I mean, even one changes the you know the math on it a little well, bit. Too. Game, then yeah, yeah, that's true. You, yeah, you're baking in, so they're gonna play at least thirteen, probably. You hope fourteen, and then yeah, like you said, if they I guess if they win that first round game, that's fifteen that they're looking at. Yeah. I mean, you're you're playing almost an NFL regular season at some point. Um, and somebody will, if you think about it too. I, I was yeah. obviously playing college football 25. Like if you don't get a first round buy, you're playing. And if you're anywhere seated, anywhere from five to 12, you're playing four playoff games. If you're going to go the whole way and the five seats still going to be good. It could be like Georgia. Georgia could be a five seat. Yeah. So four games on top of, you would have to go to the sec championship and lose. Cause if you win, then you're a top four yeah. seed. But I mean, but yeah, 17 games 17 right there. Games right there in that scenario. Maybe unlikely that someone takes that path, but it probably it's not impossible, and it'll probably happen at some point. As long as this format is still in play, which this format might not even last that long. So who knows? Anyway, back to the question. Like, yeah, I because of Avery, because of Dylan, maybe because of little Joe Jackson. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I think DJ's just a touch over a grand. Dylan Edwards, that's the interesting part because you want to think about how many carries he could get and what we already kind of just talked about, maybe getting 30% of the share, but having to spin that off a little bit off of Avery too. And then you try to think yards per carry that way, but his could be just so bizarre because he's going to hit a home run and those numbers are going to get inflated because he's he's going to run like for two yards, like four times in a row, and then he's going to roll off like an 80-yarder, right? Mm-hmm. So if he has two or three of those, like that's 200 yards right there. Um, then I'll give, I'll, I'll say 350. Okay. Uh, last year, again, adding some context to this, Giddens was 1200. Ward was 600. Uh, Will Howard got to the 300 mark and Avery was just shy of 300. Uh, in total last year, the quarterbacks, Will Howard and Avery Johnson combined for over 600 yards rushing. Um, which I, I, I mean, we'll we'll talk quarterback and Avery expectations and some I, questions I, about him, but we're I, you throw him into this because he'll be a part of this run game. Where, yeah, where do I, you think his threshold is? The reason why I say three fifty for Dylan, and he might get to four hundred. That might be accurate, but again, some of his production is going to be receiving yards. And then Avery, I can still see. Like, I know they don't want to just use him as a running back. I get it, but he could reel off some big ones too. And he had just over around 300 last year, and he didn't even play that much, right? So yeah, outside of a, a few games, obviously he played a lot against NC State, Texas Tech, um, TCU. I think he played a lot. Was it Houston? Another one. So, and a lot. He played half the game. But, yeah, I what I will say is, like, I could still see Avery getting six 600, maybe more. So that's why I'm playing it conservative with Dylan at 350. But, again, he can get those yards so easy with just a few big plays. Yeah, I think I, I think it'll be interesting. I mean, and there are going to be those games still where he has the big plays or also like last year, I mean, they weren't going into every game after the Texas Tech one like, well, we know Avery can run the ball like crazy. They, they it, were very upfront that we knew that we could do this against Texas Tech, so we'll exploit it. Like there will be, there will be a game or two this year where I think Avery Johnson runs for over 100 yards. Like, there will just be those games where that happens. And it yeah, makes because there's, there's gonna be those, you know, I kind of call it like nut crutch moments, right? Where you're like, well, well, shit. I like, the only offense we have is Avery's legs. We're not going to win if we don't run this dude. There's going to be a game or two where they get caught in that conundrum because the defense takes everything else away. So there is that element. And and I keep 
and the more I think about this, I keep wanting to add to that 350 for Dylan, just because you talked about Treshawn Ward, I think having around 600, and I think he missed two games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, uh, let's see, last year, Treshawn Ward ended up playing in, uh, he played in parts of 11 games, uh, so he, he missed one whole game. Uh, which ended up being the UCF game was the one that he didn't, he didn't play in. And he, and he opted out of the bowl. Yeah, and he opted out of the bowl. So that's a good point. So he did miss two games. Uh, and like he had still within those four games last year where he had less than 10 carries in games. Uh, so he did it you know, on nothing too crazy. Average 5.2 yards per carry. Uh, next thing and final question for you on the running backs. You kind of already mentioned – some of it, but we've we've heard a decent amount already this this fall camp about some of the guys behind DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards. So, who is number three out of the running backs for carries on this team? I will say Joe Jackson because I think that's the safe answer. And if you wanted to go a little bit more bold, you could go to James White because they like him and I think they trust him. And I don't know if that's more ball security related. It makes you think after. Hearing some of the the defensive players talk about all these turnovers in practice, apparently, which scares you. But hopefully, it's just because the defense is that good, that opportunistic, and uh, things of that nature. But then it makes you think about well, Joe Jackson, pretty young. Wonder if he's one of those one of the uh, players having ball security issues. That's just speculation, because I know that for for a walk on, they talk about LeJane's White quite a bit. Yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, what what do you think a realistic number is then for for that third guy? Because again, this is kind of uncharted territory for for K State, given the circumstance of the last couple of years. Where uh, I mean, two years ago, the twenty twenty two season was a little different than the the prior year because DJ Giddens, you know, got uh, more carries than what you were accustomed to out of there. But nobody else got a touch except as a running back except for Anthony Frias for, what, one play in the Missouri game, and he fumbled, and then another running back didn't touch the ball until the bowl game when Jordan Shippers had a one-yard touchdown against it's Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a fun question. I think that's I asked gonna that. That's going to be a great trivia question. Who scored a rushing touchdown against Alabama? I think I, I think I did that with Fan and uh, Scott Wildcat uh, around did bowl season when we played that game, and I I had I had them answer uh, who accounted for rushing or receiving touchdowns in Chris Kleiman bowl games. Uh, so they had to name all the players that had done it. Did and they forget? Yeah, I can't remember. I think I don't know. They may have that one may have stood out to him like, okay, this was the one that was going to stump me. But that was kind of fun to look back. I mean, even in just five short years, you're like, hmm, kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, like this is kind of uncharted territory because then last year, same type of deal where um, Anthony Frias ended up getting 13 carries. Uh, LaJames White had three and Joe Jackson had four. Um, and most of those, I think, came in the game to start the year uh, against. Uh, who was the FCS opponent last year? Simo. Uh, so, I mean, where where do you think carry wise that ends up being? Because I we can talk about yeah, you know, they really like these guys and they talk yeah. about them, but there's just not going to be enough touches realistically for that to be a significant part of it. So, where do you think that ends up sitting for the third running back? I could see average out to about a couple a game. I don't I don't know that it's going to be much more than that. I think that's. I mean, I think that's even more than what. Yeah, it's obviously been in past years, so I think that's interesting to people, even if it's just, you know, they I get two a game. Tw- I could see 20 to 25, and I'm not even saying they get two per game. I think maybe the the average comes out looking yeah. in that way because if you add up those 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 touches beyond Giddens and Ward, it comes out to about that, and I think they all could end up with Joe Jackson, right? It, it, and you're going to have some garbage time, which I'm trying to factor in as well. Um, you're you're going to have that against UT Martin. Do you have it again in the non-con though? I don't know. Tulane could be yeah. close enough to where you don't really have garbage time snaps for backups. You will play Arizona State and Cincinnati though. Arizona State, Cincinnati, yep. And BYU. BYU, but that's in Salt Lake game four. I don't know. Houston, Willie Fritz is your coach. He scares the shit out of me because everything that's happened <laughs> a couple of years ago. Um, and obviously that's on the road, but you get Arizona State, Cincinnati at home, 
Maybe there's some garbage time opportunities there. Yeah, remember, like every Kansas State win last year was like a blowout. They, they didn't win close games. So if it ends up like that, then you're talking about less time for guys like Jackson and White. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where uh, where it ends up going, but just a little look right now at the running back situation for K State. We'll be back again uh, throughout the buildup to kick off for K State with more of these kind of preseason questions and giving an idea of what the offense and defense and everything else for the Wildcats might look like this year. So that will do it for us today. We'll be back again tomorrow on a Friday, closing out the week. And a reminder that if you want more on the Cats, go to On3, find kstateonline.com, and uh, get signed up. If you're not, we'll be ready to uh, talk Cats over there with you as well. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll see you.